Hey guys, I am so thankful to have you here with me for Seven Kids Online. This whole month, the month of November, we're doing a theme called Shout Out, where we let people know that we're thankful for them. And I am so thankful that you guys are here with me right now. Now, gratitude is what we're talking about, and that is being thankful. So what gratitude actually means is showing somebody else that you see how they've helped you. So I have this paper megaphone so I can turn the volume all the way up and shout out who I'm thankful for. And who can I think of? I have one. Thank you, Nathaniel. Nathaniel helps me make our videos every week. So we're so thankful for Nathaniel. If you have somebody you're super thankful for, all you have to do this month is take a piece of paper and roll it up into like a cone shape. There we go. Piece of tape and then you put it in the right spot, you have a megaphone. Thank you, Nathaniel. Let's check out this week's Bible story about gratitude. It lets us know that, it reminds us that we always have something to be thankful for. Where does gratitude start? With your words? Oh, uh, hold on one second. Hello? Oh, thanks. In your head? What about your heart? Being thankful includes all of those things, your heart, your head, and your words. But I think gratitude truly begins with your eyes. It starts with paying attention, stopping to see the people around you and all the other beautiful things in your life, like the way your dad buttered and cut your toes just the way you like it. That crossing guard standing in the pouring rain to make it safe for you to get to school. The way your kid brother can turn even cleaning your room into a party. Your fingerprints that God designed for you and no one else in the whole world. That amazing, breathtaking sunset on the way home from dance class. When you truly see these things, it changes your heart. The words bubble up in your mind and you can't help but say thank you. The more you remember to thank God and the people around you, the more others can see God at work in you. And that's why gratitude is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Feeling down, you pick me up. Sing, oh, oh, oh. And when my heart is feeling emptied out, you fill my cup. Sing it out now. Oh, oh, oh. I just wanna say thank you for the way you love me. I wanna say thank you for the way you love me. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Say thanks. 
For the joy that you give to me For the way that you made me free For my friends and my family I just wanna say For loving me from the start For every beat, beat, beat of my heart For everything you are I just wanna say, I just wanna say and I'm here to talk about gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. And let me tell you something, having gratitude is easy when everything is going the way you want or the way you expect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but you know and I know that things don't always go the way you want or expect. I have just one thing I want. I have just one thing. Hello. Ah! I have just one thing. <laughs> I have just one thing. I I have just I I just I just want to say. Wait a second. No. Ah! I have just one thing I want. I just have one thing that. What else could possibly go? Ah! In today's story, we're going to learn about the best time to have gratitude. I'll give you a hint. It's not always when... <clears throat> it's not always when things... Oh, come on! I'm not even using a microphone! Oh, I'll tell you later. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 18. Ilsa sighed as she trailed along behind her mom at the grocery store. Can I just go wait in the car? Mom handed Ilsa a tiny loaf of bread to put into the cart. You need to learn for yourself what you can eat. Nothing. I can't eat anything. Earlier that day, Ilsa had gotten the food sensitivity test results back from the allergist. No gluten, no dairy, no artificial colors or flavors. I don't even know what gluten is. It's in bread and pasta and crackers and a lot of other things. Ilsa grabbed the loaf of bread. And what's this? Gluten-free bread. It looks like cardboard. As they reached the dairy case, Ilsa spotted the new holiday display. Yes, they've got eggnog. She reached for a carton, but mom shook her head. Eggnog has dairy in it, hun. You can't have milk. Let's try this instead. Mom picked up a small carton and handed it to Ilsa. Soy nog? By the time they got home to unload groceries, Ilsa was miserable. You've got to be kidding. What about Sunday dinners? What about Aunt Ellen's stuffing and Grandma's rolls and pie and all the good stuff? We'll find options for you, I promise. Ilsa reached for her plastic pumpkin full of candy on the counter. She grabbed a mini candy bar and then stopped, a sinking feeling in her stomach. I can't eat any of this now, can I? I'm sorry, hun. When Ilsa opened her lunch bag at school the next day, she tried not to groan. A sun butter sandwich with gluten-free bread, a bunch of grapes, a few carrots, and some weird looking oatmeal cookies. Where's my string cheese? Oh, right. Ilsa couldn't bring herself to finish lunch. Her stomach still felt empty as she settled back into her seat at social studies, where their teacher, Mr. Mendel, dimmed the lights for a slideshow. One of the best ways to learn about other cultures is through something we all do every day. Any ideas what that might be? Like what we wear? <laughs> Actually, I'm talking about something we do at least three times a day. Ilsa raised her hand. Eat. We all eat. Bingo! A famous photographer took photos of families all across the world along with the food that they eat in one week. I want you to pay attention to the details. This first family lives in Great Britain. The first photograph included a family from the United Kingdom. The overflowing table of food included cookies and pizza. 
Mmm, pizza. Here's a family in southern Italy. The next image showed a family with three small children. The loaves of bread on the counter looked so fresh, Elsa could practically smell the scent of baking bread. Ooh. This is Germany. The next image showed another table top-loaded with food, but Ilsa could only focus on the container full of ice cream front and center. Yet another thing she could no longer eat. Her stomach rumbled. Here's a family in Bhutan. It's a small country beside India. The next photo showed 12 people with a colorful display of vegetables, a large bag of rice, and a small amount of meat. Ilsa frowned. That's all they eat? It's what they have to work with. This next photograph is from the country of Chad in Central Africa. A family of six sat on the ground. In front of them, a tiny bag of grains, a small amount of beans, and a handful of vegetables. Wait, where's the rest of their food? That's it. For a whole week? Ilsa shook her head. That's just... Ilsa, what are you thinking? I guess... I knew that some people don't have the same things to eat that we do, or as much. It's just different, seeing it. The colorful photos haunted Ilsa for the rest of the afternoon. She was quiet as she took off her backpack in the kitchen at home. You want a snack, hon? I've got some trail mix. I'm good. Ilsa pulled her lunch bag out of her backpack and opened it up. How was the gluten-free bread? It was okay, actually. I'm going to finish my sandwich now. Ilsa took a bite of her sandwich and chewed. It wasn't like regular bread, but she could get used to it. What's that thing Grandma always says before dinner? What thing? I don't, before the prayer. It's the verse, like say thank you, whatever happens. Oh, um, it's from Thessalonians, I think. Mom checked her Bible app. Give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. Yeah, that. Ilsa smiled and took a bite out of one of the oatmeal cookies. Hey, these are really good. Thanks for making stuff I can eat. Ilsa knew it would take some time to adjust her new eating plan, but she was glad for the reminder that she still had a lot to be thankful for. When the Apostle Paul first started telling people about Jesus, he didn't always get applause. Instead, some people were mad at Paul and he spent a lot of time in jail just for saying what he believed. Probably not the way he wanted things to go. But listen to what Paul wrote. Give thanks no matter what happens. Did you hear that? No matter what happens, that means the best time to have gratitude is all the time when you get picked for the team, and when you don't get picked. When your mom buys your favorite cereal, and when your sister eats the last bowl. When you're in school, when you're out of school, even when you're quarantined in your house, there's always something to be grateful for, if you look hard enough. Here's a good place to start. Paul wrote, give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. Even when things don't go the way you want or expect, you can always be grateful that Jesus loves you and died for you. So the one thing to remember today is this, you always have something to be grateful for. So next time you talk to God, tell him you're grateful and not just when things go your way. Be grateful even when times are tough because God loves you and is there for you all the time. And that is why I have just one thing I want to say to you, God. Thank you! Huh. Yeah, well, I still thank you, God. Thank you! Bye!
There are so many reasons that we have to be grateful to God. He made us, he loves us, he sent down his only son to be put on the cross to die for our sins and that way we have a personal relationship with the one who created everything. So this week's bottom line, remember, is to always have something, you always have something to be grateful for. And if we remember that, then we will have joy in our lives. And when we pray, we want to remember that even though we should always ask God for help in whatever we're in, whatever place that we're in, whatever troubles we're having, we have God to rely on and ask for help. But the real thing we need to repay attention to is being thankful to God. When you're praying and talking to him, let him know how much he's done for you. Let him know how thankful and grateful you are to him for creating everything, for creating you, and for sending down his son, Jesus. So in that light, let's go ahead and pray now. Dear God, thank you for creating us and loving us. Thank you for sending Jesus to be our savior. We know that we can trust you no matter what because of who you are, because of everything you've done for us. You give us joy no matter what we might face in life. Help us look for all the things that we can be grateful for this week. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. I'm thankful that you guys joined me for this lesson right now. And I can't wait to see you next week.